Hi everyone, my name is Ritu Gill, also known as OSINT Techniques on Twitter. For OSINT Curious 10 Minute Tips, I'll be going over Facebook tips of what to look at once you've identified your target's profile. So besides uh, looking at that full timeline, where else would you look? I'm going to share some tips that have worked for me, uh, and I've broken it down by first looking at profiles, then pages, groups, and then saving info. So let's start with profiles. The first thing I like to do when I have a profile is find the user ID. And the reason I want to do that is because this ID cannot be changed by someone. However, if you have the profile name or that username in the URL, those can be changed by a user. So how you find it, you can right click and view page source. And then we control find and we're looking for profile underscore ID. And next to the equal sign, that is the number you want to capture. If it's easier for you to remember entity underscore ID, it gives you the same results. I'm going to copy that number. How I like to verify is take it into Facebook, uh, into a new tab, and I enter facebook.com forward slash that ID. It should take you to that same profile. Uh, and the reason I like to verify is sometimes people will accidentally capture their own ID. So that's why it's always important to do that extra little step to verify I have the right ID. So the next thing I want to do is look at the about section. So in this section, some, some users will list lots of important information here. This can be things from birthdays to usernames, um, family members listed. So you always want to scroll through each tab just to make sure you don't miss anything. Another place on a profile you want to look at is under check-ins. So this one doesn't have anything, but you want to take a look. But if you have someone that does have some geotag posts, you can drop down, go to check-ins, and you'll see two posts in this case. Um, it says visited on, it gives you a date. If I click on that, it will take me to the post that was geotagged. Keep in mind, this is user generated, so it could be entirely made up, um, but it's important to take a look and it might be relevant for your file. Another thing I like to do when I have a Facebook is if they have a friends list, I like to search once I load up all the friends, I wanna search for say a target surname, looking for family members. Um, and that could be important, right? Uh, narrow down, maybe identify some. I also like to enter the, the same person's name to see sometimes they'll add themselves on like old or new accounts. So I like to use that search bar for a few reasons. Another thing I'll do is I'll load the entire Facebook friends list. And sometimes I'll do a control find looking for, say, um, friends that have listed Seattle as their, you know, um, location or maybe a particular school. And I want to see all the, you know, classmates this individual has, um, that type of thing. Another thing you can do with friends is identify mutual mutual friends. So if your target has an open friends list, you can use a search string in the URL and find out who that target has mutual friends with. And here is the link you'll see right here. All you would do is you take this first ID and you replace it with the first person's ID number and then the second one here. And if you want to read more about this, you can go into pluses.net forward slash Facebook matrix. This is Kirby Plus's website, um, and you can see a bunch of relevant uh, Facebook searching tips, tools, and you can actually scroll down and find the Facebook link here. And you can copy it from here if it's easier um, and try that search. Another additional technique, if you have Facebook Marketplace and you're joined in that group, you can actually search for your subject and see if they're selling items. And the main reason to, is to find out when their profile was, say, created. Um, so I found this helpful before. So if I'm searching for um, the individual I'm looking at and I see, okay, they have something listed here. If you go to the right side and you'll see under seller information, it says join Facebook in 2007. So there's a couple of caveats um, this could be a good verification tool, but you can't be a new profile on Facebook 
um, it, uh, to have Marketplace. So if you recently created your Facebook, you won't be able to use this tip right away. Um, you also might must be in a location where Marketplace is available. Alternatively, you have another option. So just going back to my tabs here, um, Josh Huff's blog, uh, that, that's Beowulf88 on Twitter, he conducted research into Facebook account creation by looking at user IDs and narrowing the date that account was created, only looking at that Facebook ID. So if you read up on the Facebook origins, you can um, see if that's another alternative for you to find out that information. All right, so let's go into pages. So again, the first thing I want to do is find that page ID because that can't be changed. We're going to right click and view page source. And then we're going to control F and enter page underscore ID. And again, you'll see it's hyperlink. So I'm going to enter again. And the second time you'll see there's no hyperlink. I'm going to copy that number. That is the ID. But let's verify, right? Open up a new tab, facebook.com forward slash that number. It should take you back to that same page. So again, always using uh, that extra step. Another thing you always want to do when you're looking at a page is go through all the sections from on the left hand side, uh, see everything, you know, about that business or what's listed, um, maybe what upcoming events and whatnot, photos and, and that type of stuff. So that's really important to look at. Also, another thing when you're looking at a page, you always want to check is if you scroll to the um, middle sort of and on the right side, you'll see something called page transparency and it will tell you some good information. You click on see more and it will tell you the page's history. So this could include um, name changes or, you know, countries listed where people are managing this this um, page. If you go into the tabs at the top, I go to page history, it will tell you if there's any changes in that name. So that's really important. And then you can, of course, tab over and see if there's any other relevant information. And then I'm going to scroll over. So again, if I'm searching for, uh, in this case, it's just a newspaper uh, local to me, I enter it, you'll see one thing I find about pages, um, sometimes it will give you a number of how many people like this. And that's great. In this case, it says 6.5K, but I can't click on it. How I can click on it is if I go through the tabs and I select pages, all of a sudden I'm able to click on that 6.5K number. And now it's going to give me a list of individuals who have liked this page. So again, this could be really relevant depending what page you're looking at. So now we're going to look into groups. So again, groups also have IDs. What I'm going to do in this case is right click, view page source, and you probably guessed it, but it's control F and you enter group underscore ID and it gives you an ID number. And what I do is I copy that number again, verifying in my new tab just to make sure I have the right ID, that group should show up. So another thing you wanna do when you find a group is, so this one's a public one, but you wanna click on all the tabs on the left because again, they can have relevant information under about or you know under members identified, events coming up, um, photos, that type of stuff. Another thing you, you wanna do is make sure you always look at the right side because you'll get a description of the group um, but again, starting from, you want to click on the about section to get this, but the history of that group. So you want to see when that group was created, perhaps, right? Is it something that was created, you know, last week or was it four or five years ago? So it will also list any changes, um, any changes to the group name here. So this is, again, another relevant tip. And I'm going to close that. We also have, so in this case, this is a private group, but again, you can still get that information under history, see when it was created. It might tell you who created it, give you a little bit more information. You can go under members, see who the admins are, that type of stuff. So those are a few tips for when you're looking at groups. And now I'm gonna go over some saving tips. Um, again, if you have, you're looking at a profile or a page, uh, one thing you can do if I wanted to download this photo, I can open it, click on options, and you should see a download button here. 
Again, if that button doesn't show up for certain photos, you can use certain software like Snagit or other screen capturing software to capture images, that type of thing. Um, another tip I'll show you is if you come across videos and you want to directly save them uh, without using a third party tool, um, I'll show you by opening a video here. I open link in new tab and I'm just going to pause everything here, but in my URL, www, actually take that all out and I'm going to enter M basic and leave the dot in there and I'm going to hit enter. It opens up the mobile version of that video. So right now, if I click on this, it doesn't let me save it, but you have to play the video, which allows me to save video as, and now you can save it to your desktop. So that's a little tip for saving videos directly. And now I will show you if you have a friends list. Again, I know that's something that's difficult sometimes. I found this technique kind of works uh, better than others, but I'll open up an entire friends list and I will highlight all of them from the bottom to the top, including friends, but not the icon. And I let go and then I hover over and I select print. And you'll see here, you'll get a list of the friends um, in this PDF and then I'll save it from there. So just a neater way to save. And um, yeah, those are some of the tips. So hopefully you guys learned a few things. Thank you for listening and please remember to be OSINT curious. Thank you.